Through my practice, I connect my personal to the social, creating objects that come into existence by their surroundings. These works induce stories of peoples that have long been oppressed by reigning hierarchies. They speak of inequality, division, and segregation. In relation to my personal, they speak of the relations of the United States and Mexico and the place that exists between the two that is often not localized. My first attempt at situating this work stemmed from a visit to my family's hometown in Jalisco, Mexico. Having been several years since anyone had resided in the Tapias, most walls and roofs had started to cave in and collapse. Rooms had been scavenged for anything deeming monetary value. What was left behind held no worth to those invading the space. Among the items left to reside in the house was my mother's quinceanera dress. A garment that for me held such sentiment had no impact in the capital of another. This garment held no purpose to them, but for myself and family, it was a moment in our lives it was a period and a piece that was shared across the town by many women and families. The dress that belonged to my mother was the first piece of clothing that wasn't passed down but solely hers. Returning to the United States, this moment influenced my first large-scale exploration into an alternative lace draping process. With the help of my family, we recreated the dress and cast it into porcelain. Following suit, I began to try and locate a space where these two countries I belong to situated me. Through Primo Levi, I was introduced to the term gray zone, that for me at that moment resided at the point where these two countries meet. In that place, I learned of the women who had been robbed and violated during their journey into the U.S., fleeing a country that had long been economically oppressed by the first world they sought refuge in. Following an oppressive cycle, the coyotes they paid to cross them forced themselves upon them, taking their undergarments and hanging them atop trees as proclamations. As a means to try and address this injustice of the rape trees, the Arbol de Violencia series emerged. In these works, undergarments that once held a body take a breath, filling the space inside. The absence of their being was now held within this bone-like porcelain sculpture. Every part of the garment that once touched the body is embedded into clay, leaving a memory of that person. In a white space, these garments hang at eye level atop an acrylic rod that has been sharpened to a point. If not aware of the space one traverses, they mean to inflict pain to pierce those who do not see or choose not to see the injustices being enacted upon them. This series also migrated out to the Sonoran Desert in Arizona, where I hope they would become agents of their own, occupying space that was taken from them. Installed on a palo verde, they interrupt the landscape. Within this space, the gray, the work made attempts to situate the effects industries have on peoples residing in that locale. My attention is drawn in particular to those of border towns in Mexico, abusing people's rights and privileges for the gain and profits of a select has contributed in large to a social and economic imbalance. The femicide in Ciudad Juarez being one of its effects reached its height of missing women in 2008. Although the number has since subsided, women continue to disappear. Activists in the area have named maquiladoras, such as Foxconn, Lexmark, and Driscoll, as a few of the contributors to this abuse and injustice. Not knowing what means would be respectful, but acknowledging of these events, I began to research passings and burials, as recalled by my family. The work in itself spans five years, but still feels to be in its infancy state, as more is needed to be done. I acknowledge that this is due, in part, to the nature of trying to address events that have not ceased. This theme of hidden and oppression led me to create Desplazamiento Contención, 
an installation for the Mi Tierra exhibition at the Denver Museum. Collaborating with youth in Aurora, Colorado and Santa Fe, New Mexico, we talked about immigration and how it has impacted them and their families, what they have lived through, and how the recent election has impacted their lives. Through their sharing of stories and experiences in a group setting, everyone received a space where they could be heard. Some learned a bit more of their peers. Those who did not feel comfortable speaking publicly shared with myself in a private setting. With permission, audio of their experiences were recorded, then edited by sound artist Carlos Colin, linking sounds from the frontera with their stories. The completed audio was to play through the installation. In tandem to sharing stories, youth were asked if able to contribute an article of clothing pertaining to them or their family. As some couldn't afford to lose a whole garment, they tore segments off pieces they held dear to them. Every piece that was shared made its way into the installation. Shown are images of some of the articles brought in by the youth. All the pieces were then brought together for the culmination of the installation, assembled and then coated with porcelain. The original article was burned away in the firing, leaving a frozen piece holding memory. All pieces were then held within a tumble that was secured with a silver leaf strap. The final installation employed multiple elements that together talked of the current state of displacement that has been confining and documented in first-generation children to their cities they reside in. One that is not absent but untold is the history of colonization. These youth came together in a space to speak and listen of what was currently taking place in their communities. As I continue to work and expand my understanding of the state I reside within and away from, I find it important to continually remind myself not to be consumed by rage. A degree from my personal being is fine, but to be able to continue to make work that is more than one, I need to see beyond the industrialized oppression, beyond the vulnerabilities of each garment carried where I currently stand. We need to see the humanity that is embedded within us all, even if its form may not be desired at times.